Hello, welcome to Thrifts and Simple Living. My name's Maria. If you're new here, I vlog mainly about homeschooling, urban homesteading and home life, which is usually cooking. Today it's going to be a bit of urban homesteading because once a month I take part in a collaboration which is hosted by Victoria from Home Educating the Mad Lads and a few of us get together and we show our gardens at the end of every month. It runs between um, March and October so at the last week of every month we just take you a walk around the gardens and show you what's growing and what we're all doing. So if you want to have a look at the others I'll drop a link to their channels down below. Um, Victoria's already done hers so I know hers is up. Everybody doesn't do them every month it all depends on the areas they live because different area zones have different times for growing things than us so we might start ahead of them finish before them or vice versa or some months it might not be possible to do videos at all so i'm going to swing you around and i'm going to show you what's happening outside i've got the patio everything's normal on the patio the normal things herbs a few flowers which are dying back now strawberries but they've not done so well in the pots this year so we're going to put them into a bed move them across into beds hopefully then next year they'll be better gooseberry bush down there that's doing very well some blackberries poking through the fence Some begonias still flowering. They've done nice, but they haven't filled the pots out, which is a shame. Normally they do. A few pansies still there. Let's take you around the corner. This is where we've got the blackberries. This is just the one bush, and it's grown really well. We've got a blackberry on there, look. Yep. Already had a lot of blackberries and made blackberry crumble. Look like we'll have a few more yet. So that's quite nice because as it's grown along, it's um, rooting itself down. So I'm hoping it will fill all this. If it grows up there, that's okay. Too much sticks out the other side, I can always snip it off. And the same there, see where it's growing up. So even if it grows along under there a bit, I'm not too worried like it wild now this is where the pool was got the trampoline there at the moment and it's been put some grass seed down you can see the edge of it and that area has not grown very well but i have to have some more just removed all the fencing from it so we can mow the lawn and he's going to move the trampoline across because believe it or not the grass under the trampoline has grown far better than what i've just shown you it's grown a lot better so whether it acts like a greenhouse under there i don't know i'm just going to move that along and see if we can help the other side a bit so yeah um beyond that we've got flowers some lupins um we've got the sweet peas some lovely colors on them beautiful colors them and I love the mauves they're nice and the sunflowers they're all going back now dying off but we've got a few offshoots from the big shoots they're looking quite nice and again along here see the seeds I've got quite a lot of seeds I've collected quite a lot and there's a lot more so I'm trying to get them from all the different colors to make sure that I get a good mix I mean look at that the color is beautiful and it smells nice as well so it's what I'm doing at the minute I don't think um, I'll plant such giant sunflowers next year because it stops all of the sweet peas like there's a middle section that haven't grown very well and i think because the sunflowers have taken over we'll get 
some lupins there. Some more back flower down there. They've not grown as tall as normal, but I think it's because of the light in the middle, although they could get taller yet. But I think next year I'm just going to grow a row of these sweet peas along there because these are beautiful. I love them. There's so many seeds coming on them. I'm going to collect as many as I can and I'm just going to put them all along there. However, I don't know if this end section will be there next year. We shall see. Take you up to the workshop area but swing the other way. For us you and martyrs, I'll show you this area. This is where the chickens were. And it took the front of it off. And at the moment we just stored wood in there. That's to keep dry for bonfire night. But I don't know what we're going to be doing with this area. I have thought about replacing all these wooden bits at the side and putting tough polythene so it can be like another little greenhouse area or knocking it down all together and um, our little area just put some pumpkins in another little grown area or something we put pumpkins in pots this year but they didn't work so i don't know you could easily put two in here that could produce a few a few is more than what i've got this year let's just swing around to the tomatoes now we've got some nice red tomatoes and we've had a few off them but they've not done brilliant because uh, I think all the rain in July killed them off a bit. Okay, you can see there's some, quite a few actually, coming on, so can't grumble. All that has got to be cleaned up and the staging can go back in the greenhouse. In the greenhouse I've got the onions and there's the peppers. Now they just keep growing and growing but I have noticed there there's a pepper forming so we might get some peppers. There's a tomato plant at the end but that's not done nothing. The cucumbers have not done nothing. There's one growing there but it's a bit smaller. I don't know if it'll grow any bigger. And there might be one forming at the back there. But whether they'll do anything or not, I don't know. This one never grew any bigger than there, which is odd because normally they grow right the way over. You can't control them. <laughs> and that had one stunted cucumber on it. That was it. Herb. The melons, they've not done nothing at all. They've flowered. You can see flowers, the one that's gone along there. But that's it. Nothing. I've seen a few melons start to grow, but disappeared. Just all the waste this is really. There's nothing on it. And it's not going to do nothing now. Nothing at all. So I think I'm going to clear all that out and clean my greenhouse back. <laughs> There, um, Dean's emptied the pots which had the potatoes in. They grew really well, one potato in each pot, and you can see the pots down there. And they grew some lovely potatoes, really nice. So that's going to be turned over, and the strawberries are going to be bedded in there. That's going to be new, their new home. Next to that is empty, that's where we had cauliflower, but because of all the rain, it all went brown and that did nothing. So that's going to be cleared for next year. Here we have leeks. They've grown well and we're overrun with them because they've taken two beds. Further down. There's an empty bed there, but we did put some lettuce seeds in. I can see a few little seedlings, but whether they'll do anything, I don't know because it's getting quite cold now. And I did see a few more seedlings, but some of them have vanished, so I think they're not going to do nothing. Next to that, we've still got some beetroot. We've 
got loads in the freezer, but they're the last few that are left. What we're going to do is boil them, slice them and dehydrate them to make beetroot crisps, hopefully. Um, that's all we've got left of the spring onions. Got an empty bed there. We'll get some cardboard on them and then come spring, we'll, well, later this year, early winter, we'll put the cardboard on and put some um, compost on top. Sweet corn, that's the baby sweet corn. I did put seeds in for some large sweet corn, but it didn't grow. So I've got the baby sweet corn go grown in the greenhouse. So I thought, well, I'll put that in, see what it does. And there it is. And sometime September it'll be ready because I've got the silks on and some of them have started changing colour, so it won't be long. So there's the row of marigolds. We've got tons of marigold seeds. They still look quite vibrant, but they're starting to look a bit sparse now. You can see all the dead ones. And these are ready for emptying these pots. And that one because that's got um, seeds that just appeared from last year. So we'll go around here. I can get through the gate because Dean's putting the bin next to it. It's about to start mowing. I've got pots of lavender in, but I think I'm going to put the lavender into the front next year to give it more space to grow. It smells beautiful. Because um, there's nothing wrong with growing things in pots. If you haven't got much room, growing in pots is a great idea. But I'd like my lavender to spread out and I have got the space for it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. It's on there. I think I've got six pots all together in all the corners. So I'm going to put them in the front for them to spread out. Here we've got runner beans. You can see there the bean in the pods quite big. I'm going to leave them because I'm going to use them for growing next year's beans. Only next year I'm going to put them into um, pots. I'm going to get two big pots and make wigwams in them because we get far too many beans. Far too many. I enjoy eating things in season and you look forward to seasonal foods but if you've got a freezer full of it and you're eating the same all the time there's no joy in the coming season's food because you've been eating it all the time. So I'm going to cut down what we grow bean-wise. Um, in this area, I think we're going to tack wire onto that. You can see the outline. I don't know if my finger, there's my finger, <laughs> the outline that these are on. We're going to tack wire across like on the P one there. And we're going to put the tomatoes there, try the tomatoes, see what they do. So yeah, let's go through the gate. This is the area that's now storage. It used to be where the chickens were. I do like this area. It's a lovely area. Don't know why. I used to like it when all the birds were here because we had the chickens in here. And then this one had the pheasants and where the shed is at the end, we had um, quail. <laughs> but, yeah, um, this was a pheasant one last time I filmed. The pheasants were in here, but we've taken a section of it. Halv well, not halved it, but took a section for storage. And then we've got the chickens here. We've moved them from that top bit because they've got more space here. Now the pheasants, they've gone to live on a farm, a poultry farm. It's a farm where they kill animals or anything like that. It's just where they breed them. They do pure breeds. And also the chickens, they do some hybrid ones, which is bar for two of them. The, the white ones are hybrids, and we get our hybrids from there. But yeah, so they're gonna have a nice life there. And they've got an aviary, which is a lot taller than this one that they were in. So yeah, they're quite happy there. Swing you around and you can see the raspberries. They come in a nice, got some in the freezer because you can only make so many at once with pies and things like that we've had to cut them back a bit but it certainly doesn't stop the production makes it better if anything I think I think I'm gonna have to come out and uh, get a few of these I can see a few red ones so yeah 
I can say where this um, gold colour shed is. The pens used to go right to the end of there. You can see like the end of the world and that had quail in. Um, quail only live for about two years but they produce an awful lot of eggs and we couldn't get through all the eggs and we couldn't give them away because people didn't want quail eggs. So when they started to die off we decided we wouldn't get any more. So we knocked that end of the pen down then and put a shed there. And now that the pheasants have gone we've got the chickens here. And they've got a much bigger area, nicer area. And we've also got a little bit of storage out of it, so can't complain. So, yeah, a lot of this poultry stuff. And this end one, that's a nice sized pen, but it's all storage, as you can see in there. It jingles, the Christmas reindeer, and there's Halloween stuff in there. And tubs of decoration of things. So it's a good sized storage area. And also my, my shed there that has all the filming in it now. We do the cooking, the air frying in there now. I've shown you that the other week. And I've got a new bench outside of there, storage bench, so all of the um, rabbit things can go in there, which is quite good. So yeah, I think um, all in all, everything's okay. I'm just ready for a clean up for winter. So that's how it's all looking for this month. Um, it's still in production, but you can see it's starting to go back a bit now, ready for the autumn. I would like to grow some things over the autumn, but because we want such a big clear out this year, then I'm going to leave it all, go fallow, <laughs> and um, see you know, what we're going to put where. I'm going to get the gardening journal out. I'm going to plan it what we want where and then start off with it fresh in the spring. And the same with the green ass, I'm not going to grow melons again or anything, get all that cleaned out and it'll all be good for spring. So that's it for the gardening collab for this month. Um, might start taking you out and about a bit more when we're doing jobs out there because urban homesteading isn't just about what you're growing, it's about other things as well. So we might start doing a bit more with that as well. So thank you for watching and um, the next video now will be an air frying video, so if you like to watch for that, then please join me. And until then, take care. Bye.